Welcome to Rigenix. In this video, we will continue our discussion on interface. In my last two videos, we discussed about how interface helps in building flexible and loosely coupled application and how it helps in writing testable code. If you have not watched those videos, then I highly recommend you to watch those videos first before watching this. Especially the video on interface and testability as I am going to use the same example while explaining this. The links are available in the description. In this video, we will try to realize how interface helps in working with IOC containers and dependency injection. Please note that this video is not about IOC container and dependency injection. We will discuss this in a separate video in detail, perhaps when we discuss about dependency inversion principle. However, let's have a quick overview on both these topics. Before dependency injection, let's define what is dependency. Dependency means relying on something for support. So in plain c language, dependency injection means injecting those supports to our classes. Primarily, it is advised to be done via constructor. Basically, it is not good practice to create your own dependencies because this introduces tight coupling between your classes. You might have heard new is glue, which means that the new keyword that we use to instantiate our objects are primarily responsible for making our application tightly coupled. Hence, you should avoid creating concrete class instances using new keyword. Instead, you should depend on abstraction, perhaps by using interface whereby letting the dependencies to be created by someone else for you in an abstracted manner and use them by injecting it whenever required. Basically, dependency injection helps you in enhancing all your code abilities like maintainability, testability, flexibility and extensibility of your application. Now, let's quickly look at the IOC container. IOC container is a framework for implementing automatic dependency injection. The container creates the object of the given class or we can say that it creates the dependencies of the given class and injects them automatically when required at runtime and disposes it at the appropriate time. This is done so that we don't have to create and manage object manually including its lifetime. So if you use container then you would hardly see any new keyword in your entire application. The container basically helps us to manage the dependencies within the application in a simple and easy way. Of course, the dependency injection can be achieved without container as well as I have already done a lot of injections in my previous videos without container. Why we use container is because in an enterprise or big application, it is difficult to manage the object's lifecycle. Hence, delegating it to third party helps immensely. So let's quickly see how we can use interface to achieve abstraction via IOC container. I am going to use Microsoft Unity container. However, there are a lot of containers available. You can use any one of them. As I mentioned earlier, I will be using the same banking application that I have created in my last video while explaining interface and testability. So in this application, we have data access service that deals with data access operation. Then we have couple of business services like authentication service, which depends on data access service to authenticate the user. Please pay attention to these new keywords. Once we use our Unity container, all this new keyword will go away. And we have another business service called Balance Checker Service, which is also dependent on Data Access Service to check if the user has balance available or not. Then we have our main withdrawal service, which has two dependencies iAuthentication Service and iBalance Checker Service. So, as per our application, if we go to Data Access Service, you can see here if the username is John, then he is eligible to withdraw the amount. So if we go to program.cs, we are passing username as John. So it should say John is eligible to withdraw. Let's run this application once and see. Yes, it says John is eligible to withdraw. So let's understand what we are trying to achieve here at the end. We are trying to understand how interface can help us in removing all these new keywords. You can see here we have two new keywords here. In balance checker service, we have a new keyword here and as well as we have new keyword in our authentication service as well. So to use Unity container, we have to install Unity container using NuGet package manager. So let's go to dependencies, right click and say manage NuGet package. Hope you have an idea about NuGet. It is the official package manager for .NET that means it is a platform which is used by developers to create, publish and consume .NET packages. Let's search for Unity. So we are going to use this Unity.NET Core. Let's install this.
Now see it has added all the references of Unity into our project. Now in order to use Unity container, we first need to create an object of it. Let's go ahead and create a separate class. App Unity Container Unity Container is in the namespace microsoft.practices.unity So let's go ahead and add that. Let's create a public method. Let's instantiate our container. Now this is the container to which we need to add all our types. That is as I mentioned earlier that Unity container will instantiate our classes. But the thing is that it doesn't know what classes we have. So we have to give him the type name upfront. In IOC container terminologies we call it as registering our types. Let's do that. So here we are telling the container that we have withdrawal service type in our application. Let's do the same thing for other classes as well. Unity container dot register type data access service. Authentication service. And we have one more balance checker service. Let's make some small changes in our authentication and balance checker service. As mentioned, we will not be using this new keyword. Instead, our container should inject this. Let's create a iData access interface. Let's copy the signature. We need these two methods. and implement this to data access class. Let's come back to our authentication service and make the changes. Let's make this as iData access. Let's rename to iData access service. Let's inject this here. iData access service. Data access service and let's assign this here. Let's make the similar changes to balance checker service. I can copy this. Let's paste it here and I will just change the constructor name. And it's done. Let's come back to our Unity container class. Now let's register the type mapping. Unity container dot register type I data access service comma data access service so we are using here register type method to register data access service mapping basically it configures which class to instantiate for which interface here what we are asking container is when i ask i data access service give me data access service class let's do the same thing for other classes as well so when I ask I authentication service, give me authentication service. When I ask I balance checker service, give me balance checker service. Now let's see our dependency tree. Let's go to our withdrawal service class. Withdrawal service is dependent on I authentication service and I balance checker service. And these two are implemented by the concrete classes. Let's go to authentication service. And authentication service is dependent on iData access service. Similarly, balance checker service is also dependent on iData access service. It means if we resolve withdrawal service, our container will automatically resolve all the dependent types. Now let's resolve our withdrawal service and return.
Resolve is nothing but telling Unity Container to instantiate withdrawal service. And then Unity Container takes care of instantiating all other dependent classes. Now let's remove all the existing new keyword as well. Let's go to our program.cs class and delete these two instantiation. Delete this as well. Let's call our register service method. Let's build this. All OK. Let's run it. We get the same output. John is eligible to withdraw. However, we don't have any new keyword in entire application now. Let's debug this once and see. F11, it goes to is eligible to withdraw method. But if you can see here, we have the instances available here. This has been injected by Unity Container. It goes to authentication service and you will see data access service is also available here. So how it was possible? It was possible because we have used interface here and we have done all those mapping using interfaces. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If it did, then please make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button and share this video with others to see more such contents. Thanks.